You might have seen The Rock or your favorite bodybuilder on Instagram scarfing down a stack of pancakes or slabs of pizza and proudly labeling it as a cheap meal or even a cheap day. Some folks claim that these cheap meals or cheap days actually improve your ability to lose fat during a fat loss diet because they give you a psychological break from the dieting process and only eating clean foods. Other folks say that they actually increase your metabolic rate. Some folks say that they make you feel less hungry due to an increase in fullness hormones. So in today's video, we're gonna unpack what the science actually has to say about cheap meals. We're gonna find out whether or not you should be doing them during your fat loss diets. And I'm gonna give you a powerful alternative that might just be flat out better for fat loss progress. Before we jump into that, my name is Matteo Mara. I'm a Canadian coach and personal trainer who helps guys lose body fat and build visible muscle using a simplified approach to both nutrition and training. So if you like this kind of thing, like this dang video and then go check out my channel. Subscribe while you're there, watch some of the other helpful stuff that I have for you. First, let's just start by taking a look at how a cheat meal is actually described in the scientific literature. We can start with this 2022 paper on young adults and adolescents in Canada done nationwide. And the authors describe a cheat meal or cheat day as an eating episode that temporarily deviates from one's established dietary practices, which are usually restrictive or restrained, to consume prohibited foods momentarily. Most popularly, these cheat days are done either as a single meal or an entire cheat day as a series of meals where you are intentionally increasing or not tracking your intake and consuming highly processed or very calorie dense foods. So where does the magic actually happen with these cheat meals and cheat days? Because I think anyone who's really into this fitness thing knows that there's probably not some special benefit to eating junk food, right? The two primary claims about cheat meals and cheat days are that firstly, they allow you to have a wider selection of foods that you wouldn't normally be allowed to have on a strict fat loss diet. So you're venturing more into those ultra processed and calorie dense foods that don't really fall under the spectrum of typical healthy eating. The second one is that you're actually getting a reprieve from chronic energy restriction or the demands placed on you by fat loss dieting to reduce your calories for an extended period of time. And that both of these can really make it easier to adhere to the diet overall. Luckily for us, we have a body of research that directly compares the approaches of a continuous approach to dieting, meaning we're keeping that energy restriction stable for an extended period of weeks or months, versus an intermittent approach where the subjects are given breaks during the middle of their diet so they can eat a little bit more food and freshen up, so to speak. Let's take a look at some of the first research we have on diet breaks or taking a temporary detour from your diet. To my knowledge, the first is this paper from 2003, where the authors weren't even looking at whether or not this could help you lose more fat or stick to the diet better. They were actually trying to research weight regain and relapses after dieting interventions. So what they wanted to do was diet people down and then encourage them to go hog wild and regain some weight so that they could actually study that relapse in the context of the study. Since then, there have been a number of studies that look more directly at whether or not taking diet breaks can actually help us preserve more muscle and stick to the diet better and reduce the metabolic slowdown that is inevitable with fat loss dieting. Here's one you're gonna love called the Matador study where they dieted two groups of obese men in parallel. In group A, they started with four weeks of baseline or maintenance calorie eating, followed by just a straight up 16 week continuous fat loss diet around 950 calories per day flat out, followed by an additional eight week period of baseline or maintenance dieting. Group B started with that same four weeks of baseline or maintenance dieting, but then they ate in an alternating pattern of a 950 calorie deficit for two weeks, followed by two weeks of baseline eating for a total of 30 weeks, followed up by another eight weeks of baseline eating. The researchers recorded their measurements along the way at every four weeks of dieting, and they even followed up with them at six months after the study to see how things have been going and, and how much weight each group regained. Can you guess what happened here? The intermittent dieting group who was taking breaks along the way lost 14.1 kilos on average, and the continuous group lost 9.2 kilos on average. That's a solid amount of weight to lose. And the difference of 10.8 pounds on average between the two groups is quite a lot as well. Not only that, the intermittent group who took breaks along the way actually maintained more of their weight loss at the six month mark as well. So does that mean that taking diet breaks during your diet will help protect your metabolism to help you burn fat faster and 
keep more of it off in the long run? Maybe, but it's unlikely. We just can't say for sure, in part because they didn't measure the subject's daily activity levels during the course of the study. And a reduction in daily activity levels is one of the largest contributors to that metabolic slowdown during the fat loss dieting process. I see it in myself, for example, when I'm really dieting, I start getting lower in energy. Boy, dog walks just get a little bit shorter. I stop fidgeting around at my desk as much. When I'm waiting in the kitchen for my dinner to heat up, I might be leaning on the counter and just allowing my body to burn fewer calories. And it's completely subconscious. Your body just slows down and burns fewer calories as a, in, in an effort really to, to preserve what it has and, and keep a baseline level of homeostasis. That's just one of the limitations of this study. So we shouldn't just look at this data and say conclusively that taking diet breaks is better or not. But here is probably the real reason why the intermittent group lost more fat. Dude, dieting for fat loss is hard. Alone, straight up. Dieting for 16 weeks continuously at a 950 calorie deficit per day, fuck, that is hard. All right, so taking breaks along the diet makes it easier to stick to the plan. And if the plan seems easier to stick to, guess what? You have more buy-in, you're more involved. And more buy-in means a better adherence to the plan. Better adherence to the diet plan means more weight lost. When you see the weight loss happening, more weight loss means more buy-in, which drives your adherence higher and the cycle continues, right? So look, I'm totally on board. There's probably a real benefit to taking a detour from your diet so that you know you're not just staring down the face of 16 weeks of continuous all out war, chicken and broccoli. But that benefit probably doesn't come from, you know, a, a reduction in adaptive thermogenesis or the metabolic slowdown due to fat loss dieting. And here's a crazy thing. These folks weren't like gorging them on cheat meals either on their baseline eating weeks. They were just eating at a maintenance level of calories. I think we would have seen very different results if the intermittent group was, you know, every two weeks encouraged to go out to an all-you-can-eat buffet on the weekends and get double their money's worth on these crazy cheat meals. So it pretty much seems like the best fat loss diet is the one that you're going to be most likely to stick to. With all else being equal, your total calorie balance is going to be the largest determinant of how much fat and weight that you lose, which is a big red flag for an untracked cheat meal or cheat day where you go out and consume a ton of calories. Think about it. Let's say you burn 2,500 calories a day on average each day, and you decide that you're going to do a fat loss diet, so you impose a 750 calorie deficit each day in order to lose this weight. That's fantastic. If you stick to that diet seven days in a row, you're gonna incur a 5,250 calorie deficit at the end of the week, which is gonna lead to about a one and a half pound weight loss, which is fantastic. Now, in a second scenario, we have that same deficit but you stick to the diet for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on Sunday you go out and have an untracked crazy cheat meal, but guess what? Your body's still tracking those calories, my friend. You have 4,500 calories in a big blowout, and you've just reduced your total weekly calorie deficit to just 2,500. And now for the whole week, you only lose 0.7 pounds of fat. Man, a whole week of fat loss dieting? prepping those meals, dealing with the hunger, maybe some energy reduction, and all that sacrifice just for a few extra tasty meals on a Sunday, and you cut your whole progress rate by half, does not sound worth it to me. Additionally, we know that highly palatable and super tasty foods actually cause us to desire more of those highly palatable foods instead of like scratching an itch, so to speak. In case you've ever felt like you had a spare leg or separate drawer, always room for dessert, you are not alone. We have evidence that suggests that your brain literally produces fewer of the hormones that make you feel satisfied and, and full while you're eating some of these ultra processed, super tasty foods. This all contributes to what's called the food palatability reward hypothesis, which suggests that foods with ultra satisfying textures and super pleasurable flavors actually cause you to desire more of them instead of just ticking a box and, and making it go away. So limiting your attendance to an ecstasy inducing poutine fest during your fat loss diet is probably a good idea if you wanna stay sane and stick to your diet. With all things considered, I'd say that untracked cheat meals are not a worthwhile inclusion during a fat loss diet for anyone who's trying to take a serious attempt at losing a good amount of body fat. Sure, temporarily veering off your plan and going over your calories is part of life. It's gonna happen and you have to come to terms with that. You will significantly slow down the process by having high calorie untracked cheat meals. If you're cool with that, go ahead and knock yourself out. But your boy isn't dieting six days a week and dealing with the hunger and all this shit that comes with it just so we can have an extra burger and fries 
and a piece of cake on a Sunday. So here are the two strategies that I use personally to get the adherence boost of cheat meals without it unnecessarily slowing down my fat loss progress. Strategy one is called flexible dieting. And this essentially means that you're gonna stay strict with your fat loss goals, your calories, your protein intake, or whatever else you're tracking, but you're gonna be a little bit looser with your food choices, meaning you don't just have to eat you know, fish and rice and broccoli, and you can enjoy some of those other fun foods in moderation as long as you still hit your targets. So if you have a calorie goal and a protein goal and you hit those for the day and you're able to fit a few Oreos in there, awesome, that's fantastic, and more the power to you. You're gonna lose more total fat if you can stick to the diet for 12 weeks instead of just doing chicken, rice, and broccoli for two weeks and then deciding you wanna fall off the diet because you can't enjoy yourself and it's not realistic for you. Now, one disclaimer about this flexible dieting thing is I know that many people have, let's call them problem foods, that they find themselves overeating and, and they find it really hard to control their appetite around these certain foods. You may want to limit engaging with those foods, especially when you're deep into a fat loss diet and hunger hormones are elevated. For me, for example, is potato chips, specifically, those like Miss Vicky's or any of the folded kettle cooked chips that are just like insanely crunchy, that is ridiculous. It turns my brain off and I can't stop eating them. And the same thing is true with pastries, like cookies and cakes and tarts and shit like that. Dude, I just don't buy that. I don't bring it into the house when I'm super deep in a fat loss diet because I know I'll go overboard. So just keep an eye on what those foods are for you and maybe include those more selectively in moderation. Strategy number two is diet breaks. You can think of this as an intentional series of pre-planned cheat meals that are tracked. So it's this pre-planned period where you're eating at a maintenance level of calories for a number of weeks or even months in order to help you get rid of a lot of the physical and psychological side effects of dieting, things like mood disruptions, sleep disruptions, hunger, low energy, shit like that, so that you can get back to the dieting process and be fresh and ready to go at it hard again. So that might look something like you diet for fat loss for you know eight, 12, 16 weeks, and then we take like a four or an eight week period we're eating at a baseline or a maintenance level of calories, kind of like the intermittent group did in the Matador study, so that you can feel satisfied again, you can enjoy a wider variety of foods and maybe put some more fun foods back in the diet. And by the end of that eight week diet break, where you're eating at maintenance level of calories, assuming you're doing it well and not just eating junk food, you're gonna almost forget what it feels like to really be hungry. And you're gonna be ready to get back into the fat loss thing if you wanna lose more weight. You're not gonna lose any weight while you're on that diet break and you might just see your weight bump up like two or 3%, but that's not a big deal because you're providing providing yourself with so much more runway to push that fat loss diet harder when you're back on it, which is something that I just see the most successful people really in most things, but especially in fat loss do, is when they are on, they're on. And when they're off, they're off. If you're at work, work hard, focus on the thing you're doing, do a great job at it. And then when you're resting and you're done after work at the end of the day, switch it off and relax. Same thing with fat loss dieting. Hit your goals, go hard while you're in the paint, and then when you're eating at baseline and maintenance level, ease up. Include more food choices, actually eat at maintenance and allow yourself to rest and recover so you can be all in when you get back to it. Hopefully this helps you make better fat loss progress and make the whole process easier to stick to. Again, my name is Mateo. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Be sure to leave a thumbs up, ask any questions you need in the comment section below, and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more awesome stuff just like this. Thanks again, peace.